Good morning. I welcome you as we gather on this 21st Sunday of Pentecost. And special welcome to those who are worshiping with us for the first time, both in the sanctuary and online. Also, a thank you to Tom Parker and Andy Graham, who are doing our tech this morning. The altar flowers this morning were given by Anne and Jerry Duggan in loving memory of her grandparents, Edith Abbott and Deacon Carl Proctor. And the cupola this week is lit in memory of Kenny Fitch and the Fitch family, longtime members of the congregation, and David is still an active member here. And I know that Gail will have an announcement. Good morning. Good morning. Just an announcement about Trunk or Treat on October 31st. It will be immediately following the church service, um, and we are looking for volunteers as we open it up this year to the community to invite them into our community of faith. So we need people to volunteer to decorate their cars, hand out candy, make cotton candy, make goodie bags ahead of time, all kinds of things. And you are also all invited to wear costumes to church that day. So I hope you'll be creative and wear some lovely costumes and help us afterwards during the event. Thank you. Well, we're already wearing our masks, so we just need the rest of the costume. <laughs> And our hope is that we'll have 20 different cars with uh, treats for the children. And as Gail said, this is an opportunity for us to reach out to the community and to help them see what a wonderful community of faith we have here. Just a couple of additional announcements. This coming Wednesday, our Bible study, which has been completely online during the entire pandemic, will be meeting in person, and we'll meet in Putnam Hall right out here beside, outside the sanctuary. And it will also be live streamed and recorded as well. The youth ministry will meet Friday here at the church up in Fellowship Hall, and that is at 7 p.m. And there will be an inquirer's gathering on next Sunday following the worship service. And this is for those who are new or would like to join our community of faith. And new members will be received on Sunday, October 24th, which is also our annual meeting. Are there any other announcements? If not, then let us draw near to God's throne that we might delight in the love that is from everlasting to everlasting. <clears throat> Join me in the call to worship. Alleluia. Alleluia. Come and sing the old, old story. And God's faithfulness proclaim. Tell of prophets and apostles. And sing the power of Jesus' name. Alleluia. Alleluia. Come and dance the old, old story. Every sinew now engaged. God of glory, tune our voices. Make our faithful witness strong. 
Come now, sister, come now, brother. All who long for love and grace. Alleluia. Alleluia. Let the Spirit flow among us. And our hearts be touched with grace. Please join me in the prayer of invocation. God of solemn silence and joyful song, be with me now as I wander somewhere between gratitude and grief, between delight and a daily grind, high resolve and unfinished dreams, generous impulses and unpaid bills. Make me small enough to be amazed innocent enough to smile at life's oddities, wise enough to forget, old enough to be patient, and faithful enough to believe that you long to work your miracles in me and through me. This I pray as I join my heart and voice with those of my sisters and brothers, and say again the prayer our Father taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
seated. Let us come now to God's altar with our tithes and our offerings as we bring to our Creator our gratitude for all that has been and our hope for all that yet shall be. Please join me in the prayer of dedication. God of blessings that we can see and blessings that can only be felt in the beating of our hearts, we give you thanks for the blessings of this day. As we stand before your altar with your tithes and offerings, let your spirit of wisdom rest upon us so that we may show our gratitude not only with our faithful giving, but also through our faithful living. This we ask as disciples of the risen Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen. be seated. So a special hello today to our youngest ones. I wonder if you have ever made a list of anything. Maybe you help make a grocery list to make sure that whatever you need at the grocery store, this is my children's favorite snack, and they always make sure this is on the grocery list. So have you ever made a list to make sure things aren't forgotten at the grocery store? Or maybe a wish list of things that you would like to get as gifts for your birthday or for Christmas? Or at Christmas, if your family sends out Christmas cards, do they make a list of who they're going to send all their cards to? This is my book where I keep track of who I send them to, so I never lose it. Or what about a playlist? Has anybody made a playlist so you can listen to music? What do you think? Are your favorite tunes? So in the Bible, there are lots of lists. Probably not many shopping lists or playlists, but there are lots of lists. And the most well-known one is the Ten Commandments. And these are like rules. Commandments just mean rules that God wants us to live by and things God wants us to do in our lives. And the first four are about believing in God. And the rest of them are how we treat other people. There are actually hundreds of commandments in the Bible. I bet some of the adults didn't even know that. There are hundreds of them, but these ten are the most well-known. And in the Bible story today, a man goes to Jesus and says, how do I get to experience heaven? I believe in God, but what else do I need to do? Jesus starts sharing some commandments. Jesus knows the man believes in God, so he's not focusing on those ones in this story. He focuses on the other ones. He tells the man to love and respect your parents, never hurt anyone, love your wife, don't take anything that's not yours. Always tell the truth. And then Jesus pulls another commandment from somewhere else in the Bible that's specific to this man. And he tells him not to be dishonest with your money. This man has a lot of money, and I wonder if Jesus picked that one because maybe the man's not so honest about how he got the money. And then Jesus goes on and says he wants the man to take his money and use it 
to take care of the poor people, the people that don't have a lot of things or a lot of money. So this story is asking us, what can we do to take care of other people? It's important to believe in God and come to church, and it's important to be kind to people. But this story is asking us to go just a little bit further. What can we do to take care of others? Can we help our parents bring in the groceries, especially if we put pirate booty on the shopping list? Can we help a neighbor walk the dog? If we have clothes that we have grown out of, can we give them to children who need them? Or is there food that we can donate to the food pantry? Can we help rake leaves at church or pick up trash in our neighborhood? There are so many things that we can do to take care of other people. I wonder what else you can think of. But in this story, that's exactly what Jesus and God are asking us to do. Let us pray. Good and glorious God, thank you for this day and for all of your children, young and old, in this community of faith and in the world. Please give us your guidance and your strength and your wisdom as we try to find more and more ways that we can take care of all of your children. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Thank you. seated. Please join me in the responsive call to prayer. Draw near to God, and God will draw near to you. Let us lift up our hearts to the Lord. Sisters and brothers, let us enter now into this time of sacred silence. Good people, are there prayers that you would like to lift up to the Lord this day? Yes, Jane. Um, our daughter Karen is recovering from COVID. She was positive, just started a new job. And our four-year-old grandson is recovering from his second bout of COVID. Oh, dear. So I know that your son-in-law, Nate, had COVID, and now your daughter, Karen, is uh, battling it, and also your grandson. So we lift them all up in our prayers and ask for healing to be upon them. Lord, in your goodness. Amen. I lift up in prayer uh, Leslie Musiak's mother, Ruth. She is scheduled to have uh, heart uh, valve surgery this coming Tuesday, and we ask that God guide her surgeons and give her strength and healing. Lord, in your goodness. We lift up as well Sean and Torsio, who is recovering from knee replacement surgery, and also Gail Tenney, who is recovering from rotator cuff surgery. We ask for healing for them. 
Lord, in your goodness. Larry and Sarah Lynn Spires, who were members here for 31 years before moving to Maine, report that their son Andrew is now home. He was hospitalized and on oxygen uh, with COVID and he is recovering and we give thanks for that. Lord, in your goodness. Charlene and Joe Malik have asked for prayers for a friend of theirs, Hugh McLucas, who is on hospice. We ask that God be with him and his family as they walk this path. Lord, in your goodness, lift up also Sandy Hayes' son, Billy, down in Florida, who is undergoing treatments for uh, aggressive form of cancer. And we ask that God be with all of them. Lord, in your goodness, an updated prayer that Charlene Malik is asking for prayers for the family of Hugh McLucas because he did pass away. Oh, he did. Okay, so did not know that and so we surround McLucas family with our prayer and our love and ask God to be with them as they offer their sacred goodbyes. Lord, in your goodness, let us pray. God of grace, God of everlasting glory. On uh, this weekend where we remember the founding of our country or the discovery of our country, we give you thanks. We lift up in prayer all those who came to these shores and all the, those who were here and have always called this glorious land their home. Lord God, we thank you for the beauty that stretches from sea to shining sea. And we pray that you will give us a resolve that we might be instruments to tend and care for your creation. Your creation that has so much beauty to sustain us in spirit and so much bounty to sustain us in body. Lord God, we ask you to give us wisdom and courage and strength for the living of these days. As we struggle with so many issues that seem to be tearing us apart, help us to be instruments of peace, to embody the love of Christ in our deeds, and in our words. Holy One, you have heard the prayers that we have lifted up to you this day, both those that we have spoken and those that are still in our hearts. And we give you thanks that you are always near and that you are waiting for us tomorrow and in the week ahead. Wherever life's journey may take us, Holy One, we pray that we may find opportunities uh, to serve you faithfully using the gifts that you have given us. And all this we pray in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. <laughs>
Today's scripture reading comes from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 10, verses 17 through 31. And as he was setting out on his journey, a man ran up and knelt before him and asked him, Good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus said to him, Why do you call me good? No one is good except God alone. You know the commandments. Do not murder, do not commit adultery, do not steal, do not bear false witness, do not defraud, honor your mother and father. And he said to him, Teacher, all these I have kept from my youth. And Jesus, looking at him, loved him and said to him, You lack one thing. Go, sell all that you have and give to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. And come, follow me. Disheartened by the saying, he went away sorrowful, for he had great possessions. And Jesus looked around and said to his disciples, How difficult it will be for those who have wealth to enter the kingdom of God. And the disciples were amazed at his words. But Jesus said to them again, Children, how difficult it is to enter the kingdom of God. It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich person to enter the kingdom of God. And they were exceedingly astonished and said to him, Then who can be saved? Jesus looked at them and said, With man it is impossible, but not with God, for all things are possible with God. Peter began to say to him, See, we have left everything and followed you. Jesus said, Truly, I say to you, there is no one who has left house or brothers or sisters or mother or father or children or lands for my sake and for the gospel who will not receive a hundredfold now in this time, houses and brothers and sisters and mothers and children and lands with persecutions and in the age to come eternal life. But many who are first will be last, and the last first. Here ends the reading of the word. Oh, no. 
Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts upon the scripture be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and always our Redeemer. Amen. I can't. Everyone says that from time to time. When was the last time you said, I can't? I remember saying it many years ago when I was ice climbing up in Alaska. I was standing on a glacier, and the outward bound instructor told me that he was going to slowly lower me over the edge of a 30-foot cliff. I looked at him like he was crazy. And I said very firmly, I can't do that. Well, eventually, I did do it because he bribed me. You see, it had been over two weeks since I'd had any chocolate, and he promised me a candy bar. So I did it. That's what happens sometimes. You look at a situation, and you say to yourself, I can't do that. Of course, you could always do what Casey Stengel did when he was asked to serve on a board of directors for a bank out in California. This was after the baseball legend had retired, and he didn't know the first thing about banking. Instead of saying, I can't, though, he came up with a strategy that made it possible for him to say, sure, I can do that. That strategy came to light when a reporter for the Wall Street Journal asked him what it was like to serve on the board of directors. When the question was asked, Stengel smiled and said, ain't nothing to it. You just go into the fancy meeting room and sit there and you don't open your yap. As long as you don't say nothing, they don't know whether you're smart or dumb. <laughs> you could call it the I can't chant. Now, there are lots of reasons why people say those words. Sometimes it's fear. You're afraid of heights or failure or rejection. Sometimes it's anger. Someone treat you badly and you say to yourself, I can never forgive him for what he did. Here are a few more. Sometimes you say, I can't, because you don't think that you're smart enough or talented enough or good enough to handle a situation. Well, all of this brings us to the rich young man who went to Jesus and said, good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Now, the rich young man must have been very happy when Jesus said that you need to follow the Ten Commandments if you want to inherit eternal life. The rich young man was very happy, most likely, because he was able to say to Jesus that he had been following those commandments from his youth. But then everything changed. It changed when Jesus then said, you lack one thing. Jesus looked into his heart and said, you lack one thing. Go, sell your possessions and give to the poor, and you will have riches, treasure in heaven. Then come, follow me. When the rich young man heard that, his gladness turned to sadness, and we're told that he went away with a heavy heart because he had many possessions. What happened that day is simple. Jesus told the rich young man what he needed to do, and the rich young man said, I can't. Sell all of my possessions? I can't do that. I worked hard for everything I have. Give all the money to the poor? I can't do that. How will I survive? 
Leave everything behind and follow Jesus? I can't do that. What about my family and my friends and everything that is near and dear to my heart? I can't. I can't. I just can't. Jesus said what he did that day because he loved the rich young man. That's what Mark tells us. Jesus looked at him with love, and Jesus could see into his heart. Now, make no mistake about it. Somewhere down the road, the Lord's going to come to you and say the same thing to you that he said to that rich young man. He's going to say, you lack one thing. So you need to do this or that or make this change or that change in your life because I love you and I want your days to be filled with the joy and the peace and the love that comes from following me. Now when that happens, instead of saying, I can't, Remember the words that Jesus said a little later on to the disciples. Mark tells us that Jesus said to them that it would be easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than it would be for a rich person to enter God's kingdom. When the disciples heard that, they were astonished, and they said to Jesus, then who can be saved? And do you remember what Jesus then said? Jesus looked at the disciples and he said, with mortals, it is impossible, but not for God. For with God, all things are possible. Good people, that's the key right there. When you're tempted to say, I can't, remember those words. With God, all things are possible. And say to yourself, yes, I can, with God's help. Yes, I can love that person I don't like, with God's help. Yes, I can do the right thing and not follow the crowd, with God's help. Yes, I can change my priorities in life, with God's help. Yes, I can overcome that addiction with God's help. Yes, I can be the person I was created to be with God's help. Many years ago, Corey Ten Boom saw what God can do. That's a picture of her right there. In her book, The Hiding Place, she talks about what it was like living in Holland during World War II. Now, because she and her family were devout Christians, they did everything they could to help Jews hide from the Germans. They actually built a hiding place in their house. It's estimated that the Ten Boom family saved the lives of 800 Jews. Imagine that, 800 people who got to live because of the risk that they took. And they did it because of their faith in God. In a way, they said, yes, we can, with God's help. Unfortunately, they were eventually caught and sent to a concentration camp themselves. Corrie Ten Boom survived her time in the Ravensbrück camp, but all of her pain and suffering came back a few years later. It happened when she was walking down the street and she saw a god who had been at that camp. Now this god had been particularly cruel. So she felt this rage come over her, and that rage only got worse when he recognized her, and with outstretched arms he said, please, forgive me. Corrie Ten Boom wanted to let him have it. 
But instead of doing that, she quietly said, Jesus, help me. As soon as those words were out of her mouth, she said that she felt this incredible sense of peace and love come over her. So she reached out to the former guard with tears in her eyes, and as they embraced, she said, Brother, I do forgive you. Later on, Corey Ten Boom said that in that moment, she discovered that to forgive is to set the prisoner free and to discover that the prisoner was you. What an amazing woman she was. And it was all because her faith made it possible for her to do what the rich young man didn't do that day. Because of her faith, she was able to say, yes, I can with God's help. All of this is why it's so important to gather here each week and spend this time with the Lord. All of this is why it's so important every day, every week, every month to spend time in prayer and reading the scriptures and doing the things that bring you closer to the Lord. It's important because when you do that and life gets difficult, you can be sure that you will be able to say, yes, I can, with God's help. Amen. Before I share the benediction, gold star to anyone who can tell me in that song who Miriam is. That's correct. It, Moses' sister, her name was Miriam. And when the Israelites got to the other side of the Red Sea, Miriam danced. Good people, our service of worship has ended. Let us prepare to go forth wherever we may be to continue our service of love, knowing that our God goes before us. And may the blessing of God Almighty, creator Christ and Holy Spirit be upon you all. Amen. Shalom to you.
friend.